Welcome to the Science of Kissing, What Our Lips Are Telling Us by Cheryl Kirschenbaum. Beyond the kissing scenes in steamy movies, kissing is also extremely important in our own romantic relationships. As we will see from the content that follows, kissing fulfills many functions for humans and many other animals. Carry on to learn about how kissing affects our health and our brain. Key number one. Lip contact is associated with trust and love early in life. Almost everyone enjoys kissing, but how many of us know that it is deeply rooted in our biology? It all begins with the experience of being nursed by our mother. Because of that, the use of our lips is natural to us. Babies suck their thumbs while still in the womb and at birth purse their lips for nursing. This is also the exact same lip movement used for kissing. Nursing normally occurs in a calm and safe environment and so is quite comfortable for a baby. The baby begins to relate soft lip pressure with a feeling of security and love. Premastication is the process of feeding from mouth to mouth. Now, this may not strike us as very palatable, but it was the most practical method for feeding toddlers for thousands of years. Premastication is also linked to positive feelings of lip contact. Premastication may sound gross to us now, but mechanically mashed food is a relatively recent approach to preparing food for infants. In the old times, pre-chewed food was considered the best transition from breastfeeding to solid food. In fact, it is still used today by some communities as part of ritual for many reasons, including the prevention of diseases. Moreover, many animals, including apes, use premastication. Not only does it intensify a baby's feelings of attachment, love, and security, but it also conveys the positive association of mouth-to-breast contact to that of mouth-to-mouth. This further strengthens the behavioral and emotional foundation for kissing that develops later in life. So our fondness for kissing is more than about feeling love. Key number two. Kiss-like actions serve many purposes in animals and humans. The letter X is shorthand for a kiss and there are historical reasons for that. Throughout history, we humans have used kissing for a variety of purposes. For example, in the Middle Ages, a kiss would seal a contract. The spot where the contract was to be kissed would be marked with an X. Thus, that single letter has represented kissing for centuries. During the same period, kissing marked social status. For example, a person greeting a priest would kiss the cloth of his robe. If meeting the Pope, one would kiss his slippers or ring. When greeting a king, a person would sometimes kiss the crown. Animals have their own types of social kissing. For example, moles rub their snouts, turtles touch each other's hearts, squirrels rub noses, porcupines nuzzle, and cats lick each other. Our closest relative in the animal world are the bonobos and they kiss with their lips and tongue just like us humans. Kissing methods of animals allow them to strengthen relationships and exchange information. Although research is unable to uncover the exact thoughts, it is believed that the behavior expresses acceptance and trust between animals using it. Kissing in any form involves entering each other's personal space and exchanging sensations of smell, taste and touch. Just as with humans, kissing serves different purposes for animals. Between potential mates, it may signal willingness to mate, and between family members or members of the same social group, it may mean something entirely different. Key number three. Kissing helps us to subconsciously test our compatibility with potential mates. Marty McFly in Back to the Future goes back in time and interrupts when his parents meet by making his mother fall in love with him. When she kisses him though, something does not feel right to her. It's like I'm kissing my brother, she says. 
Although the story is fictional, what is real is the biology behind the story. You see, each ape and human has a unique scent because of special glands in the neck, face, armpits and genital area. When seeking a mate, we try to find someone with a scent different from our own. The MHC genes is a group of genes that plays a major role in our immune system. These genes aid us in differentiating our own cells from foreign attackers. The more diverse the MHC genes in our body, the stronger is our immune system. An individual's MHC genes is a combination of those of our parents. Thus, two parents with greatly differing MHC genes produce offspring with an even stronger immune system. Thus, we naturally prefer mates whose scent indicates that their MHC genes are very different from our own. Klaus Wiedekind conducted a renowned study of this phenomena in 1995. He had female participants smell the t-shirts worn by different men and then asked them to select the shirt with a smell they found to be most attractive. The result? Well, the women subconsciously chose shirts from men with MHC genes most different from their own. This then is the scientific reason why Marty McFly's mother did not feel right when she kissed her son. Marty did not smell like a prospective mate. Key number four, kissing is healthy and makes us high. Kissing someone provides the same type of high people get from drugs such as cocaine. Our brain gets an energy burst and a natural high when we kiss someone. Also, our blood vessels dilate and our breathing gets deeper, which makes us flush and dispatch more oxygen to the brain. The brain then releases chemicals that make us feel high. These chemicals include adrenaline, which increases heart rate and energy, serotonin, which relaxes us, and dopamine, which makes us euphoric and causes us to crave more. Similar to the effects of many drugs, we may become addicted to kissing a lover. Kissing stimulates the same brain regions as cocaine does. Moreover, Research has shown that serotonin levels of people who have just fallen in love are similar to those of people with obsessive compulsive disorders. Thus, this could be the reason why we obsess so much when we find a new lover. The body also decreases stress and releases bonding hormones when we kiss. This makes kissing good for our health. Kissing also releases oxytocin the bonding hormone or love hormone that strengthen emotional attachments, particularly with relatives and lovers. Dopamine's effects do not last long, which is why sexual desire for a partner diminishes over time. Oxytocin, however, allows us to build relationships that continue for decades. Oxytocin is also responsible for the pleasure jolts that women experience during orgasms. Men and women both reach up to five times the normal oxytocin level while climaxing. Kissing also decreases cortisol levels. Cortisol is a stress hormone that increases blood pressure and weakens the immune system. Chronically high levels of cortisol are not safe and contributed to problems like heart disease. Thus, anything that lowers our cortisol levels is good for us. As we can see, kissing functions as a drug in the short term and fortifies bonds between people over the long run. Key number five, kissing promotes reproduction through attachment, attraction, and lust. The Kama Sutra, famous guide to love, marriage, and sex ingrained in the Hindu tradition devotes an entire chapter to kissing. Modern science as well as the Kama Sutra recognize the importance of kissing. As part of our evolution, Kissing fuels the sex drive and thus makes us more likely to reproduce. Lips are packed with sensitive nerve endings that stimulate the parts of our brain associated with passion, lust, and love. Men and women, however, may use kissing for different purposes. Women are inclined to use kissing as somewhat of a test to determine if sex is an option. One research survey found that 7 out of 8 women would not consider sex with someone unless they had first kissed. Men approach things differently. 
studies have shown that men prefer kisses with more tongue than women do. Some researchers theorize that this is because it increases the chances a woman will want to have sex because a tongue kiss transfers more testosterone to the woman. Although kissing is part of our biological legacy, some societies have tried to ban it. Kissing, however, has always stuck around. Some governments and rulers have attempted to outlaw kissing for health reasons, such as during the Great Plague in London in 1665. Much more recently, South Africa attempted to ban children under the age of 16 from kissing in an attempt to curtail the spread of HIV. The Catholic Church attempted to ban kissing several times for moral reasons because it can lead people to having sex. None of the attempts were successful. In conclusion, kissing is fundamental to animals and humans because it is part of our biology. It builds our social bonds, makes us happier and healthier, aids us in finding suitable mates, and encourages us to reproduce. Here's a closing advice straight from science. If you learn to know someone and build anticipation before you kiss, you will build up your dopamine, which will lead to a more rewarding kissing experience. Thank you for watching and see you next Saturday.